the men's slalom sitting category run two on day six of competition at the Sochi 2014 Winter Paralympic Games. Let's have a look at the start list. The fastest 15 going in reverse order on a course set by Bjorn Bruin of Switzerland. Fastest skier, Dino Sokolovic. But uh, Philip Bonadiman of Austria is looking to do the Para World Championship Winter Paralympic double. But Sokolovic on the verge of creating history by winning his country's first ever medal in the Winter Paralympic Games. And the course workers trying to remove as much of that sugary snow as they can. Great Britain fans there looking to cheer on Ben Sneesby. Is at 17th after the first run. 78 is Gerald Hayden. Japan has a uh, very strong side. Uh, Man Takeshi Suzuki is in silver medal position. Final touches being done with this piece. And, uh, well, no goals going to be awarded to Russia here. It may be to Croatia. Frederic Francois of France will get this men's slalom six ski category underway. A second run, the gold medal run. The fastest skier over the first run, Dino Sokolovic of Croatia. His lead over Suzuki Takeshi of uh, Japan, 1.61 seconds. He'll be 15th down the track, the fastest 15 in reverse order. And getting us underway on a very icy, bumpy, rutty track is Frederic Francois. Brutal conditions for these sit skiers. It's very hard at the base. Once all this soft snow has been scraped off, the problem with it is the soft snow is scraped off and there are big, big ruts. And you can see how he just ground to a halt in the sugary snow. 54 gates set by Bjorn Bruin. Oh, a big bump. Most of the impact taken by the suspension. There's the intermediate time check of 1.36.56. And uh, well, the error on the flat, not the place it wants to happen. Now he gets the speed going again as he comes inside to the stand. Yeah, good work from Francois. Got it together a little bit better now on these smoother bottom turns the top half of this track is going to be the the side and the medals and the time for everyone to beat 205 15 but uh, that will be beaten Kira Kano of Japan the next to go a double gold medalist from uh, the downhill and super jeep but uh, doesn't like the slalom he's not a slalom man Doesn't mind giant slalom. That's about as technical as it needs to be for him. But he's giving it all, isn't he? He's got inside the line. Not getting bumped around as much as Francois before. But still. Oof. Getting tossed around now. The time at the first split time, 136.56. Well, comfortably beaten. He only had half a second of Francois at the top, so he's down three and a half. Whoa! Just makes it. Had far too much speed over the terrain change. Did uh, Kano? Oh, 
Good uh, keep the ski in contact with the snow. Now, errors have they cost him? 2.05.15. No, not a bit. He adds to his advantage. 5.36. I think he enjoyed that. Keith Calhoun of the United States. Fifth in the World Power World Championships in La Molina. Oh, his second Winter Paralympic game. I was going to say he didn't finish the uh, slalom in Vancouver, and he's not going to finish the slalom in Sochi. Came into the verticale. No, it just didn't make the turn. And uh, catches the edge and is uh, pitched forward. And a disappointing end. For Calhoun. Next up, Kurt Oatway, 12th quickest after the first run for Canada. LW12, won three classes in the 60, LW10, LW11, and LW12. LW12. Which is skiers with normal or only slightly decreased trunk function and leg impairment. And skiers with leg impairments in sport class LW1 and 4, which is in the standing category, often also fit this sport class. So they can choose if they want to uh, ski sitting or standing at the uh, beginning of their careers. Now, Oatway had an advantage at the top of point five one over our current leader Akira Kano. Kano sits at one thirty two forty six, and Oatway is down. It is a very difficult track. This made heart or heart made. Even harder, excuse me, by the massive rut at the top of the pitch. Canada have a medal though from their evening's work. The uh, well deserved bronze for Chris Williamson in the visually impaired. Now, next out of the start hut, Gerald Hayden of the United States. Third Winter Paralympic Games, Hayden skiing the L12-1 class, the same as that of uh, Oatway, who went before him. Ooh. Hayden does well to get it back under control. Very lumpy, very bumpy. Wide on that one. Oh, getting bounced around, but gets it back under control. Good work from Hayden. Now, 132.46.79, the wrong side of the clock. He was half a second for the good at the start. Okay, no. Did ski that top section rather well. That's why he leads. Into this final pitch. Verticali section. Uh, by a couple of cross gates. And home. Only 0.37 off the pace. He's in second place. Good skiing from Gerald Hayden. Another American next to start. Yasmin Bamba. LW11. The skiers that have good abilities in their upper trunk. But very limited control in their lower trunk and hips as it would be the case for skiers with lower spinal cord injuries. And Bamba falling into the holes and having to pull himself to get momentum again. Oh no! Catches the left rigger on the base of that blue pole and uh, he's out. He should be okay. Needs to try and get himself out of that soft stuff. Watch his left rigger hit the base of that blue pole and it upset it. That's 
So we'll sit and wait. Cyril Moore of France, the next to go. More of a GS and super combined man. And the slalom skier. Let's, uh, let's see how he goes here. Ninth after the first run. His advantage over our leader Kano uh, at the top. 1.19 seconds. Just the three skiers have finished so far. In the second run of the men's slalom sitting category. Now 132.46. And Moore is the wrong side by half a second. And that's uh, near enough one to be called a second's loss on the top half of this piece. More than inside to the finish. Got a better rhythm on the bottom part of the track than he did on the top. But it is slightly easier. Ooh, almost catches the rigger in the red pole that spins him round. Oh, yes, he skied that well. He skied the bottom half brilliantly well. From uh, 0.54 down to 0.21 up. Cyril Moore deposes Akira Kano at the top of the leaderboard. Heiki Mori of Japan now. World champion in the Super Combined. He also won the Giant Slalom in Super G. The second in the Slalom discipline. Now, 1.25 is the advantage over Moore. And Mori. He's got the bit between his teeth on this top part. Skiing well, a little sideways there. 133 dead the time of Moore at this checkpoint, but Moni is uh, inside it by 0.53. Now, if he can find the same sort of speed that Moore found on the bottom part, then he'll lead by some way, but uh, Moore did ski it well. Look to be more in control. You can see Moni just a little bit more rounder, a little hard, more harder on the edges. And uh, that advantage of 0.53, I think, will disappear, especially if he gets a little sideways. There, uh, and 159.58, well, no. It's deceiving. He skied quicker, and he leaves by 1.84 seconds. Gerald Hayden leads the winner's enclosure now. Dietmar Dorn in the LW11 class. 13th in the Vancouver slalom. There's a bronze in slalom from La Molina. Good work from Dietmar Dorn. His advantage at the top, just a quarter of a second. And he seems to have gone okay on those difficult top turns One thirty-two forty-seven. oh that was a big check just when he had some momentum and it's come at the start of the flat and that means that uh, he will lose time over this flat section before he starts to pick up speed on this terrain change here 2.45 an awful lot of time to find Dietmar Dorn doesn't seem to be skiing in the same level that Molly and Moore were before him. 157.74. Fifth. Can't even find a place on the provisional podium. So now into the fastest six from the first run. Thomas Nolte of Germany. The uh, up, 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 first of those six, the bronze medalist at the World Championships in Sestra in 2011. He gets airborne and sideways here. His advantage, 0.8. I think that must have just all gone and he's 
has to let it fly now. He knows he has to throw everything at this second run. And he is giving it a really good shot. We've seen some people ski it conservatively in loose type. Now, Nolte, how will this aggression sit with the clock? The split time of our leader, 132.47. And Nolte, well, he's in by 298. It's almost as if that error spurred him on. And he's found two seconds on those opening turns. He's absolutely motoring. Oh, no. Well, he was going ever so quickly over the terrain change into the finishing straight. And when he looks back, he won't believe that he was nearly three seconds faster at the split, having made that big error at the top. Oh, Nolte. Well, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He's still in the lead despite coming to a standstill. Incredible, incredible. So Roman Rabble of Austria now in his first Winter Paralympic Games, fourth in the downhill, didn't finish the Super G. What can he do here? Rabble in the LW12-1 class. fifth after the first run Thomas Nolte leads the way in one of the more extraordinary second slalom runs I've ever seen two enormous mistakes one where he actually came to a halt and he's still in front still came home with the green light Rabble having had a second at the top is 2.03 off the pace now he's got a let it go here. Nolte was incredibly quick over the top. Rabble lines it up for the finish. Gets a little late on the blue gate, but gets it back under control. 157.29. Well, Rabble's found some brilliant time on the bottom of the piece, and he leads by almost two thirds of a second, just shy. 0.65, the new time for everyone to beat, 156.64. Cyril Moore has to leave the winner's enclosure. Fourth quickest after the first run, Johan Tabelay has never finished on the podium in the two previous Winter Paralympic Games. Is this to be his moment? His advantage over our leader, 0.23. Giving away over a second to the next year. It is Philippe von Adiman. Oh, he's got pitched forward, Tabelay, but he gets it back under control. Good work from Johan Tabelay. He's medalled in this discipline in World Championships looks doesn't look tidy and the clock tells us he's 0.84 the wrong side of the clock well that doesn't mean anything because we've seen skiers pull back bigger time differences than that on the bottom half of the track and well having said the top half of the track was where the medals will be won or lost i'm not so sure now i think these bottom turns are where you can Claw back plenty of time. Tabale for a medal or for a podium. No, he's outside. He's fourth. Johan Tabale still can't find that podium finish. Look, he's got a gate across the mask. It's shifted his goggles. So, Philip. Von Ademan of Austria, the current slalom world champion. Can he add the Winter Paralympic slalom title to his collection? Bronze in slalom in Vancouver. Can he go better here? Third fastest after first run. His advantage over Rabble, 1.2. 
his compatriot, his teammate. Germany currently second, Japan third. And Ravel finds himself in front by two thirds of a second at the first flip time. He's lost half of his advantage, but he's still got the green light. We know what's possible on these bottom turns and he's letting it go now. Who's Bon Adamant? Bon Adamant. Let's the monoski go. Tries to keep it high in the line. Tries to keep the full line square. There's an error. Now as that cost him, he's come to an almost standstill. 156.64. Oh, he's still inside. I can't believe it. Extraordinary scenes here in the men's slalom sitting category. And Ravel must have thought he'd seen his teammate off when he came to a halt on that bottom pitch. But Rabble will get himself a medal because there's only two skiers left that can win medals. The first of whom is Ta Takeshi Suzuki, winner of a slalom race in Copper Mountain in January. Slalom world champion from 2011 in Sestriere. Also pretty handy at GS as well. Now, what can he do here? His advantage over Bon Adam at 1.44 at the top. And uh, Suzuki skiing the LW12-2 class. Bon Adam in the LW11. But Suzuki, wow, he's nearly doubled his advantage on the opening turn. He has this method of lifting the outrigger up in front of his face to get the pole out of his way and it's working well for him Suzuki to take the lead away from Bon Adamant the slalom world champion two gates from home 156.46 oh he smashed it 2.68 seconds the right side of the clock and Takeshi Suzuki will win at least a silver medal Von Adamant will win at least the silver, and it's Roman Rabble on the right, uh, on the left of screen, sorry, that uh, has to wait and see. So, our leader after the first run, Dino Sokolovic! No, with history in his grasp to be the first Croatian to win a Winter Paralympic medal, falls on the fourth gate. Oh, I cannot believe it. Huge disappointment. He was so good on the first run. Oh, he just gets bounced. Just gets bounced out of it. And Dino Sokolov, Sokolovic will be bitterly, bitterly disappointed. This was his best chance of a medal. The Croatian supporters are absolutely deflated and I can understand why but Roman Rabble has himself a medal but the winner is Takeshi Suzuki of Japan Philip Bonadiman a bronze medalist in Vancouver takes silver Roman Rabble of Austria the bronze medal now Corey Peters of New Zealand 16th fastest after the uh, first run only 11 of the uh, top 15 have finished so a chance of a top 15 finish and if he could put down a really good run an outside chance of a uh, top 10 finish so he's have to ski the bottom part of this track very very quickly still trying to come to terms with Dina Sokolovic it, not being able to get more than five turns into his challenge for goal 8.7 for Peters that is 12th place at that moment and he skis out of the slalom disappointment for Peters Just got the direction wrong through that red gate. Maybe that 
put him off in the gates further down, but uh, a disappointment for him. Now, Ben Sneesby of Great Britain, the 19-year-old, who also swims and plays basketball. 7.27 off the pace, but in terms of that, trying to make up time on Frederick Francois, well, uh, three seconds exactly between him and the skier in 11th. Good work from Sneasby on these difficult turns. Now, where is he at the checkpoint? 10.72. So he's only got a couple of seconds to play with on these bottom turns and uh, he's getting a little out of shape with Sneasby. That's better. Get the line back. Sneezy doing a good job. He comes towards the finish. 2.05 15 will get him into 11th. Two minutes dead, 21. Well, that's gone. 2.05 15. No, he can't beat it. 2.05 30. He goes 12. So, Andreas Katfinger of Austria, twice fourth in the Winter Paralympics in 10 and 02. And it's all about trying to ski into a top 10 or secure a top 15 now. I'm not enjoying these top turns. Taking it very wide indeed. Eight more skiers after Catfinger in this sitting category. And the sit time Sneezy is 10.72 off the pace. Well, Catfinger, another six seconds. It doesn't look like he's going to catch Sneezy of Great Britain. But cat finger. Into these final turns. Still taking the rounded approach. Sneezy's time 2.05. 30. Now, cat finger a long way outside. 2.12.38. It's uh, 13. Aldrich Jelinek of the Czech Republic, the next to go. His advantage, or his disadvantage over cat finger, is 1.6 seconds. And, uh, well, not to be for Jelinek. And uh, he's got himself stuck there. Super slow mo's of the four, but it says he gets high sided here. And he gets stuck, and uh, now they've got the outrigger out from underneath him. And we'll try and pull him up. At least get him round. I think we need to get the ski on the downhill side. It'll make life a lot easier. But, uh, having to wait is Scott Mayer. seconds uh, slower than uh, Catfinger. <laughs> 
Oh, it's Jakob sitting in the way there. So there we go then. Mayor just waiting for the one to be uh, pulled across the gate. The other neck still being maneuvered out of harm's way. This uh, snowy rain continues to fall. Now across and Scott Mayer, 20th off the first run. Ah! Uh, get his second run underway. So Catfinger was 16.74 down at the first split. That would be wow. his first goal. <laughs> and he's finding this uh, second run rather interesting. Letting it run now, having got through. Oh, those top turns gets pitched forward, and uh, that's the end of Mayer. Really tough conditions at the top here for all, all these athletes to try and uh, negotiate. Got the rhythm going, just got pitched forward as he released the pressure on the ski there. Oh. In fact, it was a hole that got him. So, Kenji Natsume of Japan, his teammate Takeshi Suzuki, has taken the gold medal in the sitting category. The speed man and a technical skier, but uh, let's see how we go. Catfinger 16.74 slower than Suzuki at the time split. Kenji Matsume has uh, skied out of the second run. These skiers finding these conditions pretty brutal. I have to say, a bit of sympathy for them. Park Yong Shork now of Korea. Another skier who prefers speed to technical. Catfinger, 10 points, uh, sorry, 16.74. That's the pace at the first time check. Now, what can we find out from Parkland? Will we get a, a finisher? 16.74. Park is not going to finish because he's gone the wrong side of the red gate. And then there were four. Mm, he was going okay. No, oh, he just got his line wrong. He got his line wrong coming around that blue gate. Just uh, got the ski pointing too far down the hill. So, Oscar Antonio. Espargas Juarez of Spain now leaves the start hut and tries to tackle this brutal second run of the men's slalom. And, uh, last four skiers 
failed to uh, make the time check. So Catfinger 16.74 off the pace. Make the time check. Let's see how far Espargas Juarez is. 16.74 and he is 20.46 and now he lets it run. Over the final terrain change. In sight of the finish. I've been waiting a while to cheer someone in. It's gone down. Is it Mr. Gate? And Oscar Antonio Espiarga Suarez. Will finish and he will go into 14th position. Only 30 seconds off the pace of Suzuki, our winner. Thomas Jakobsen of Norway now, who uh, didn't finish in the Super G. Has a Winter Paralympic medal, a bronze from ice sledge hockey. Former captain of the Norwegian ice sledge hockey team. Changed sports because of a very serious injury he picked up in a game against Canada, I believe. Involved in a serious body check, or was on the receiving end of a big body check up against the boards, and uh, left him paralysed down one side of his body. Subsequently, regain that movement, which, uh, rather than running the risk of getting the same injury with a permanent result, he decided to change sports. Now, Spiadagas is 20.46 off the pace at the time check. Jakobsen finds himself 28.62. Well, that will put him 15. At least he would get down, but we've still got these tricky turns coming up, this verticale section. For the final two cross gates. Here comes the verticale. And the cross gates. And then the end. 2.30.21 goes 15th. 36.43 off the pace. And then there were two. Igor Sikorski of Poland and Nikolai Shuvalov of Russia. But first it is Sikorski, who uh, was uh, two seconds behind Jakobsen from the first run. Now racing in his first Winter Paralympic Games. Didn't finish the... World Championship, the Power World Championship slalom in La Molina. And Zagorski now just trying to let the monoski run. Jakobsen 28.62 off pace. Well, Sikorski's done well. 128.2. So he's found the two seconds that he was behind after the first run. And uh, he's letting the monoski go here. Sikorski to try and uh, dislodge Jakobsen from 15th place. Secure that spot for himself. And Shivalov being more than 20 seconds behind Sikorsky's time for the first run he gets pitched off to the left and that could be the end of his chance Jakobsen's time Wow, Sikorsky gets into 14th place and he gets uh, in front of Espiadagas and Jakobsen in fact he's 200 of a second faster than Oscar Antonio Espiadagas Suarez so, Nikolai Shuvalov. 
34 years of age. Had a very difficult first run. And the second run is uh, equally as tricky. He's uh, used for the last time in these Winter Paralympic Games. Phenomenal job done by all the course workers over the last couple of days of competition to uh, maintain the piece in what can only be described as hugely challenging conditions and that probably doesn't do justice to the amount of work and effort that has been put in. Oh no, 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 no. Well, he's missed the gates and that is the end of Shuvalov's uh, challenge and that is the end of the men's slalom sitting competition and it's gold for Japan with Takeshi Suzuki taking it disappoint for Nikolai Shuvalov who does not finish the slalom race on home snow He comes out of this turn here. Still going okay. A little low baps in the line. And then, yeah, I guess gets caught by the thick stuff and uh, shoved offline. A real disappointment for him. So the final standings after the second run of the men's slalom sitting category, Takeshi Suzuki of Japan takes the gold medal. Philippe Bonadiman, the world champion, the para world champion, settles for silver. And Roman Rabel of Austria takes the bronze. A fascinating race. Just 16 of the 41 skiers that started finished.